The AIDS pandemic has killed nearly 40 million people. Another 35 million are living with HIV. Scientists are fighting against the virus, getting closer to creating a vaccine that could prevent or eliminate the infection. In this program, we go to the forefront of the war against AIDS. The search for an HIV vaccine begins at a very unlikely place. This amateur drag queen festival in Barcelona is an opportunity for local anti-AIDS activists to get in touch with a community at risk. I was diagnosed with HIV in 1986 when no therapy was available. That was a shock, but it also motivated me to get actively involved with the search for a solution. In Barcelona, men who have sex with other men account for 81% of new HIV infections. Public campaigns bring people at risk to centers like BCN Checkpoint, where they can get tested for HIV quickly and anonymously. Hundreds of regular visitors agreed to share their blood samples with researchers. For them, this is an invaluable resource. Researchers have no problem finding people with pathologies in hospitals, but when they need to study people who aren't sick, they can't just go looking for them on the streets. So centers like ours, visited by thousands of men, gay men, in this case, provide excellent research material. The group of scientists led by Christian Brander has shown that the immune system of men who have many male partners responds by developing some resistance to HIV. If we can identify individuals who appear protected against an infection with HIV, then we can use that data to build a vaccine that should protect everybody. We've been looking at some cases of people who seem to have mounted a quite specific immune response against the virus. That needs to be further studied, but it would definitely be helpful to build that information into vaccines. Scientists use extreme safety measures working in the lab with HIV material. In this lab, we take specialized defender cells from the blood samples and stimulate them with pieces and parts of the virus. Then we see which cells react to it and which don't. That's very important because we want to understand whether these healthy people from BCN Checkpoint have more such cells that prevent them from getting infected when exposed to HIV. We can also compare that with samples of people who did get infected and ask ourselves, how are they different? Vaccines based on that knowledge could help to fight an existing infection. But the primary goal here is to help the immune system prevent the virus from infecting the person in the first place. The vaccine that we're currently pursuing is a vaccine that is preventative. And what we test is its immunogenicity, how much immune response it will make in somebody we're giving it to, to people without infection. Lab-produced vaccine candidates may work or not. Before trying them on humans, scientists must make sure that these compounds are safe to use and that they do have some positive effect on the immune system. We measure the response by immunizing the mice according to the study protocol. 
and then we recover white blood cells from their spleen and measure the standard immunological parameters. Researchers coordinate their efforts with colleagues across several countries, from Peru and Mozambique to Germany, Britain and France. Creating an effective vaccine is just one of the tasks of this European research project. We're here in Paris where scientists use samples of human skin to learn how to vaccinate people against HIV without using a needle. This skin left over from plastic surgeries allows the researchers at the Pierre and Marie Curie University to refine their innovative method of simple, painless and needle-free vaccination. The skin's a material that's very rich in antigen cells, which are the cells of the epidermis or dermis. The vaccine could be targeted towards these cells and carried to the lymphoid organs to be present in the immune system. This is how needle-free vaccination works. Small hairs are removed with sticky tape, and that opens the way for vaccine particles to enter the skin. The outer layer of our protection against the environment has evolved mechanisms that can strengthen the efficiency of vaccines. By studying skin samples under the microscope, the scientists find out whether their methods work as suggested. Through a microscope, we can look at these cuts and see the amount and location of the vaccine particles which have penetrated human skin. The analysis shows that the nanoscopic particles of the vaccine have reached the target cells successfully. The vaccine is taken on by the cells surrounding hair follicles and transported to the ganglion and shows up in the immune system. The idea now is to trigger the right response in a patient's immune system. Needle-free vaccination has its advantages, but will it be effective in the clinical setting? That question should be answered at the ongoing clinical studies in London. I'm HIV negative, uh, which is why I was able to participate in the study, but I have friends who are HIV positive. Um, I've long supported HIV charities, but this presented an opportunity for me to do more. Nick is one of the 30 volunteers who received needle-free vaccinations over a six-month trial period at St Mary's Hospital in London. of people that we have enrolled are people who are generally healthy, um, their BMIs are less than 30, they're aged between 18 and 45, they don't have any significant medical problems and they're not on um, any medications that might be affecting their immune system, for example steroids. Researchers follow a study protocol that includes measuring various health parameters and taking photos that document the skin condition before the vaccination. What's really great about the method is that it's needle-free, so it's a very attractive route. Um, we know that conventionally giving a vaccine has always been deep into the muscle, which can be quite sore and painful for up to a couple of days. So the great thing is it's needle-free. It's very new. Um, it's a great technique that's been developed, um, and so far all the participants have been absolutely fine with delivering this vaccine. It really did not hurt at all. Um, the, only, the only thing was that you have to be there with your arm on the side for 20 minutes while the vaccine itself uh, dries before they put the dressing on. It was really easy, it was really easy. I was quite relieved because I'm not a big fan of needles, but uh, 
yeah, it was it was cool. It was fun. It takes a little bit longer because we have to prepare the skin and then we have to let the vaccine dry. Um, and the other downsides are the participants can't um, wash or sweat or anything for 24 hours. Um, so that's a potential disadvantage when we try and explain the technique to participants. Researchers make blood analyses to find out whether the vaccination had the immunological effect they're looking for, namely an increase of antibodies and white blood cells that work together to defend the body against infections. Okay, let's see what the readings look like. Having processed the blood, you can see that the red blood cells fall to the bottom of the tube and we're left with this thin line of white blood cells. And it's the white blood cells that we hope have responded to the vaccine. I believe in the dark Put together, night. new vaccines and the new needle-free delivery can bring about simple and convenient means for HIV prevention. Obviously, we're at the moment at a prototype stage. So what we see right now if it was successful, we would then refine so that it might well be like a small microneedle or patch that could be applied to the skin um, without necessarily requiring a, a clinician to apply it. New prevention means can bring improvement across the world, from vibrant urban centers like Barcelona to rural communities in Africa, hoping to win the war against AIDS.